Welcome back to Biotrack Sailing. We are Pierre, Lisa, and our furry friend Tiller, sailing around the world in our Ultramere 5X catamaran. I think you can see from the background that I'm not on the boat. I've got a short visit home to visit a granddaughter. I got to see her when she was just one week old. How fabulous is that? And I'll be back to Brazil where the boat is right now. In this video, I'm going to show you our trip from Namibia to St. Helena Island. It was such a nice, easy sail. And if you really want to see what's going on in St. Helena Island, then you can zip forward to that part. It'll be at the end of the video. So enjoy. I think a lifetime dream of many round the world sailors is to visit St. Helena Island, which is in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean between South Africa and Brazil. Well, anyways, that's always been one of my dreams. And our friend Isabel from Mauritius was able to share that experience with us. Hey, I'm Isabel. I'm going from Mauritius. We met with Pierre and Lisa when they were there. And, um, and here I am, crewing for a few weeks with them. Very happy to be on board, discover the boat, and to share the high seas. In our last video, we had left Cape Town, South Africa, and sailed up the coast of Namibia. We stopped in one of the towns along the way, Luderitz, to help two canoes, another Canadian boat that had a trouble with their head sail. We were on a 100-ton mooring, and there were no other moorings available when they came into port, so they tied stern to stern with us, and we stayed there for the night so they can get the mess sorted out. We had a chance to visit a ghost town, an ancient diamond mining ghost town where houses are now filled with sand. We also viewed the stark beauty of the Nanib Desert where the vast expanse of sand dunes tumble down to meet the crashing sea. After checking out of Nanibia, the rally left in the morning and we had to pass a lot of traffic because of the boats that were going around the Cape of Good Hope of South Africa up towards the different destinations in Europe or in South America. All of the Gliwo rally boats left Namibia for St. Helena on the same day, and the catamarans were a little faster in getting out of port than the monohulls, and as faster boats would continue to increase the distance between the two fleets. Great circle and pump, and two canoes. This is by a Just left Namibia. It's our first night at sea. Um, pretty smooth sailing right now. We have Isabel Dupont on board from Mauritius. She sailed with us when we were doing the sail around the island. And you can see her in the episode. I'll just, I'll just put it up here. A lot of boat traffic, so we've got to keep our eye on the AS and uh, poke our heads outside. Most of it seems to be shipping. The boat's going around the um, Cape of Good Hope. Like when you look in the AIS, it's kind of scary. So you can see this image from our website. Uh, it's the AIS tracker and the flashing light is where Biotrek is, so we still have to go through a lot of traffic getting to St. Helena Island. And the wind's a bit shifty as well. Oh my goodness, a major wind shift. I better have a look. We often take a reef at night, and on night two, we took a reef after dark. All good. Good and nice big moon up there. And I can let Tiller go now that the maneuver's finished. We always tie her up inside it. A fish because a flying fish came flying over and landed just before it hit him and I threw it overboard it was still alive just before we took the reef. Wow the worst I heard is, is a friend who was kiting and all of a sudden um, a needle fish jumped out of the water straight into his leg and was stuck in the leg so he was still kiting with the fish trying to escape from his leg that was terrible. How did he get it out? He pulled it out? Yeah he pulled it out and then it was bleeding all over. Oh ew. When it's not too rough, I like to take Tiller for a walk around the boat. Like all dogs, she just loves to go for a walk. Mm, this beautiful sailing. The wind's pretty shifty. Okay. 
Jerry's there keeping an eye on everything. He doesn't want to leave the nav station. It's our third night at sea and we're having a beautiful sunset. I'm just reading the chit chat from the rally and there are two boats that have lost their Jenniker today. And it wasn't, the winds weren't that high, they were just a bit shifty. Yeah, generally we're just taking it easy, the wind is about 20 knots. And we have one reef in the main and we have our Genoa out. And uh, it's pretty smooth sailing except for those uh, just a little, couple little cross waves there, but mostly it's uh, fast and smooth. Peter Richards loves to help us dispose of the flying fish that land on deck. We've decided to roll the head sail for Jennifer for the night and put up a smaller head sail. And that means we have to bring it back down on deck, uh, so we winch it back down so that it'll be nice and tight when we roll it. So now that's a lot calmer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, the wind was so shifty, you had to really help the autopilot by hand. It's a lot of work, so uh, we're going to have a little calmer for tonight, which is looking forward to that. <laughs> Isabel and I were running in a lot of work. And, uh, Care was busy doing weather and other stuff, so at a certain point we said, oh, this is really getting tiring. And luckily, I kind of had, had a business call and I had to go and do that. Uh, and there we are there, the green dot. Another night at sea. Um, I just came to watch. And it shouldn't be too bad because we're taking Jennifer down at night. It just makes it a lot easier. I know some of the other boats are keeping them up, but honestly, better to have a nice night. So. We're on day five. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, following seas, overcast, uh, wind gusts that can uh, make it, uh, the boat sway a bit, but uh, aside from that, uh, just continue on towards St. Helena Island. Another beautiful sunset. And we're flying the Mauritius flag for Isabel, but we didn't know it then, but we'd be taking it down because Isabel had some urgent calls and had to urgently return to Mauritius. Thanks to Starlink, she could get her messages, but also thanks to Starlink, we'd be losing her. Are there some there? You see the dolphins to learn. When the winds are light and it's hot, it's so much fun to swim off the back of the boat holding onto a rope. Okay, that's perfect. Are you concerned, Tiller? Tiller's just watching. Okay. It's six in the morning and we can see land ahead. Beautiful sunrise and St. Helena straight ahead. St. Helena Island is about 1,200 miles from the coast of Africa and about 1,800 miles from the coast of Brazil. Truly remote island. Control on channel 1 for Australia. It's a small land tiller. Only recently has this island been well connected by airplane with the major continents of the world. Otherwise, everything and everybody had to be transported by boat. Well, there's something very special arriving in port, even after such a serene and peaceful passage that we've had in the last, in the last week. Uh, full moon makes it easy, uh, but 
It's always nice to arrive, explore new areas. We're really looking forward to exploring Ile Saint Helena. This is the island where Napoleon was exiled. We're going to visit the house where he lived for his last days. And Napoleon was buried here before his bones were removed and taken back to France. Uh, so it's a very special island because it's so remote. It's right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the airport is not always working, but it is working now, so they do get some visitors. And uh, it's, as you can see, a mountainous island with beautiful views. So really looking forward, to, although it's just going to be a few days before we have weather to proceed along on our route towards Brazil. Even Tiller knew we were approaching land. She was so excited this morning. So about another hour and we'll be turning the corner to go into the anchorage. Good morning from Santa Helena. So what do you think about arriving? Oh, it's very exciting. It's always good to arrive at a new place. What are we about to discover? Even though it was Sunday when we arrived, we were able to go to customs and get cleared in right away. In St. Helena Island, you have to take a taxi boat to shore because there's nowhere to leave your dinghy. We were lucky we were there when there was no wind and no swell. Normally there's a huge swell, so getting off the boat is quite challenging, which is why they have the ropes you can hold on and, and swing over to the shore. Another way to get to shore is just to have someone drive you over in the dinghy and jump off very quickly. <laughs> After the customs formalities were complete, we explored a little bit the town of Jamestown, but had to wait until Monday to get some money because there were no ATMs on St. Helena Island. Shard was saying that was that's the human ATM. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The town is nestled between two hills and there are a couple very charming hotels in town with also some relics of times past. A group of us took the Napoleon tour of the island to learn a little bit about the history of Napoleon and his exile on the island. The first stop in the Napoleon tour of the island is the Briar Pavilion, which is where Napoleon first stayed when he arrived in the island in 1815 because the house where he was to stay, Longwood House, was not yet ready. Okay, we're at Briar House. This is where Napoleon first came when he was uh, brought to St. Helena. We had a tour in French and the guide was saying he wasn't exiled here. It's not a prison. It's a beautiful place. He was brought here at the request of all of Europe, not just England, uh, after the Battle of Waterloo and it was uh, for three years to decide what to do with him. I guess we're going to learn when we go to Longwood House that what they decided to do with him was to keep him here until he would no longer be remembered. So we didn't have a prison term. He uh, just stayed here for the rest of his life. Various countries in Europe under the leadership of the British and they were worried that because he was representing the revolution so deeply that if he went back to Europe the revolution would re-emerge re because he, he, he was the, the embers of revolution. Longwood House on St. Helena Island is a site of great historical significance, famously known as the final residence and resting place of Napoleon Bonaparte during his exile. The house, maintained as a museum, is preserved to reflect its state during Napoleon's stay from 1815 until his death in 1821. It offers a glimpse into the life of Napoleon and showcases various personal belongings and memorabilia from that period.
Napoleon was a voracious reader and his library once had 3,000 books and he was supposedly reading all the time even when traveling. The headphones are because I'm doing the audio tour. So this is the library and they had to have a grill on it because of all of the rats and to protect the books. But this room explains the repatriation of Napoleon's remains, uh, that uh, his uh, body was exhumed and he was taken back to France. So it was all a process overseen by both the British and the French. There's newspaper articles and pictorials of the process. Uh, it's so interesting this house with so many original paintings, lithographs, documents. Uh, quite a collection here. The recorded tour is really pretty interesting, describing paintings, describing his life, describing each room. Uh, really a very comprehensive tour at Longwood House. Napoleon was only five foot two in stature. That's my height. Next, a visit to Napoleon's tomb that required walking downhill for a kilometer and then back uphill for a kilometer. All worth it. Napoleon was fond of the tranquil Seine Valley and visited it several times. A beautiful valley with lush foliage and flowers. A few days before he died, he confided that if he were to remain on the island, he would like to be buried there. And four days after his death, on May 9th, 1821, at about midday, his coffin was carried down the path by eight soldiers and he was and he was buried there. Nearly a quarter of a century after his death, his remains were removed to France, his beloved France, where he had wished to be buried next to the Seine. Jacob's Ladder on St. Helena Island is a remarkable and historic piece of engineering. It was originally built in 1829 and it was constructed as an inclined plane to connect Jamestown, the island's capital, with a fort located on the hill above. The ladder consists of 699 very steep steps that rise 183 meters or 600 feet from Jamestown to Ladder Hill. It was initially designed to transport goods and ammunition between the fort and the town using a pulley system. Okay, the last steps. I'm going in. <laughs> Running on the way. That's happy. Oh, wow. We were we were told when we checked out of the poor captain that the world record was set yesterday, right, Pierre? I think yesterday. Monday. On Monday. Five, five minutes. minutes and four seconds. Five minutes, four seconds to go up. That's the world record for coming up. Most people take at least 15 minutes. It's pretty steep, but also the steps are large. They're not normal steps. They're, they're like almost a foot, right? The steep uh, angle is 40 degrees, over 40 degrees. And the angle's over 40 degrees. So, you know, if you stop and sit down and look down, you get dizzy. And I think that's Mappy's problem because I just kept going up and I'm like, I'm not going to look down very much. And it's great. And here's the beautiful view. And look at the clarity of the water. It's deep where we anchored, but it's very clear. Tourist spot, and you can just walk around. Um, 
Aileen and Bernard went inside the tunnels and came out the other side, you can, at your own risk, uh, explore the area. After the climb down, we stopped at the museum, which had more Napoleon memorabilia, and also described slavery on the island and the abolition of slavery. When we come back from shore, Tiller's always waiting for us. She can't go ashore here, but she can go swimming off the boat and the water is beautifully clear and pretty warm. My voice is just a call away. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. I'll keep you safe for night and day I'll be where you want to be Yes, I'll be where you want to be Please don't cut you there. One more. One more. The anchorage is very deep at St. Helena, and although the bay is full of moorings, we weren't allowed to take a mooring because there had been an incident earlier that year where a mooring had let go and a boat had crashed on the rocks. We always like to check the anchor, so we both took scuba tanks and Pierre went right down to the bottom to, to make sure the anchor was well dug into the sand. Let's see what you have. Killer, if you do that there, it's gonna make a mess. Huh? What did you find? Huh? It's a beautiful sunset and little St. Helene. Cheers to the I'll tell you when to look up here. <laughs> there, I think it has to be absolutely cloudless to have a green flash because we don't even see the sun clearly. No, but there is, at the moment of the last direct turn, so now it's over. This would be Isabel's last night. She had an urgent business crisis and had booked a trip back to Mauritius. We were so sorry to see her go because she had been so much help on the boat and so much fun to have on board. And we would have a new crew, Aileen. You've seen Aileen in some other videos, such as our video on reef restoration in Indonesia. And she really wanted to join us because she had been on a monohull that had just arrived and they were going to stay some time in St. Helena and we were poised to leave. We were also going to get to Brazil in time for Carnival. And so Aline decided she would like to jump onto our boat and that was great for us to have another crew member for the last part of the leg from St. Helena to Brazil. I spent much of my career working in neurotrauma, including spinal cord injury and cerebral cavernous malformation. Cerebral cavernous malformation is a genetic disease and they're also spontaneous malformations. These are clusters of blood vessels in the brain that can bleed and cause little mini strokes. And if you want to know more about it, please visit the web website. We contribute to the Alliance to Cure, which is a not-for-profit foundation working to find a cure for cerebral cavernous malformation. They support researchers throughout the United States and the world. 
and they host a family conference. And if you want to know more about this disease, please visit our website and you can also visit the website for the Alliance to Cure. And if you want to contribute, as we do, 100% of your funds will go to the foundation and you can use the links in the description below or on our website.